Warlord Games, uh, Doctor Who Exterminate the Miniatures game, in conjunction with the BBC. Uh, this was, if we're honest, a matter of when, not if, uh, for us. Uh, any issues that sort of flagged up with initial miniatures that we seen at the time. Still as Doctor Who stamped on it, let's face it, if it was toilet paper we'd buy it. Um, a surprisingly small box, as you can see by my not outlandishly large hand. It's not huge at all, um, but it's, it's fairly full. Flip it over to the back. One could scarce believe that this much stuff could fit in here. Of course, it's small stuff, so that's why it all fits in here. Um, if you're going to order this online, the first thing I'll tell you to save you any disappointment is there are no Time Lords in this box. Okay, so read the small print. It is Cybermen and it is Daleks. Okay, so think Battle of Canary War, essentially, but, but not yet. <clears throat> uh, going through the boring bit here at the back. The Exterminate game contains 12 easy fit plastic Time War Daleks, 12 easy fit plastic Cyber Legion Cybermen, 14 plastic Cybermats, a double sided 36 by 36 battle mat, card scenery, 34 recruitment cards, 56 adventure cards, 36 battle cards, 16 page rules booklet, 12 page adventure booklet, 24 page guide to the time vortex booklet, <clears throat> catalog, 10 combat uh, dice, 2 quick reference sheets, card ruler, 59 card tokens. That's the boring bit. Let's shut up and, oh do you want to know this bit down here? Do you? Do you, do you really? It, it just tells you it plays people and, and stuff. Uh, you probably actually want to know, I don't know, you, may, you maybe don't genuinely care, um, but we're talking ages 12 plus, 2 to 4 players, 30 to 60 minutes. And as we all know in we Gamer language, 30 to 60 minutes is probably 2 to 3 hours. <laughs> Hopefully not in this case though. Anyway, we'll shut up and have a look inside. Right, we'll have a, a quick rattle here and see if anything else warrants us taking more time over, shall we? So we have our, as promised, booklet, Exterminate, Guide to the Time Vortex. And it, it is what it is. It's, it's a little bit of sort of help on how to set up your factions and intro to the game. Painting guide on your dialects that you received. I imagine Cybermen and Cybermats next. There we go. Ranged weapons, competing species. It's all it's all sort of healthy advice. Scenario one, meeting of Mel. Scenario two, ship of death. Scenario three, countdown to oblivion. Do, 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 do. Scenario four, five, doomsday. No, five scenarios so far. Six scenarios, the time zone, or the zone, sorry. And an explanation on traits, special traits. Okay, so, yeah, fair enough, useful. It is going to help clarify and expand our game experience. Our quick reference sheet. And you can see, looking at this very quickly, that it is uh, certainly on paper. <laughs> Um, fairly straightforward. You've got your initiative phase at the beginning of each turn. Players roll five combat dice. The player that scores the highest number uh, of hits becomes the active player. Reroll all combat dice in case of a draw. Two is the action phase. Movement sub phase. Active player moves their miniatures. Next player moves their miniatures. Shooting sub phase. Active player shoots. Next player shoots. Melee sub phase, active player moves and fights, next player moves and fights. Upkeep phase, recover shocked miniatures, roll to remove under fire tokens, replenish battle card hand, refresh adventure cards. Seems fairly straightforward. We have a weapons table here on the back. Um, ranged weapons type and traits, so there's Dalek disruptors. 
cyber gun, energy rifle, energy pistol, heavy energy weapon, Suntarm blaster, sonic weapon, Zergon electrical discharge, Jadun executioner pistol, unit G36, unit pistol, unit light machine gun, unit RPG or bazooka, hello. Melee weapons, type, cyberman shot gauntlets, sword, sonic device, Jadun executioner pistol, chain sword, hand weapon, improvised defensive weapon. Okay. Now, I would imagine there should, oh, there we go. There should have been two, just one where the second one was. So we've got one that's Dalek flavored and one that's Cyberman flavored, but it is just the same stuff. I would say not to move to simply help people uh, who are just starting out. So they can clearly say that's my sheet, that's your sheet. You know what you know what people are like. So Doctor Who Adventures then. What does Doctor Who Adventures offer us? Introduction. Oh you're getting blinded by the light there, sorry. Introduction, advice on using other factions, the adventures of the Doctor, the Doctor and his companions, aha, his or her companions, in-game abilities, faction victories, other alien factions, playing with agents, if in doubt run a solo scenario, oh I like that, I like, I like little things like this that help you get your head around the rules by, by doing it on your own, it's always helpful if you can play with yourself. Movement subface, shooting subface, upkeep, winning games. So we're getting little explanations on all those bits. Then we've got a, another scenario here: time junction, multiplayer scenario, Doctor and companions, plus up to three other factions. So our first book there gives us six scenarios to work through. This book gives us a solo scenario and a multiplayer scenario. Okay, cool. More paperwork, the rules themselves. Not exactly a hefty tome. Uh, let's just jump straight to the back and see how many pages in total are we talking about here. 15 pages, of which you can see there, that's the appendix already. So a little foreword. Like the fact there's loads of pictures in here. Uh, core concepts, break game elements, symbol explanation, Okay, cool. Adventure cards. Some more symbols and what they mean, what to do with them. Rules for battle. I'm liking the layout so far. Obviously, we're not pausing to read completely here. We're, we're literally kind of rattling through it together. Uh, but I've got to say, from a, opening the box, it, it doesn't feel daunting so far. There's there's nothing kind of scary about this. It all seems quite approachable. The writing is all broken down into manageable little chunks. There's not big, big screeds of stuff. Certainly going by the, the, the phase sheets, it doesn't strike me as being overly complicated. Claiming cover, melee resolution, and there, boom, we're into the appendices. Um... Yeah, okay. And epilogue. After reading the rules, you're now ready to take the time vortex. Assume control. Next steps. Look at scenarios. Next information in the guide to the vortex. Blah, blah, blah. Discover more on www.doctorwhotimevortex.com. So we will have a look at that. We'll have a look and see if there's more online uh, for this. We know, obviously, Warlord have a host of uh, box sets out for it. Um, but, you know, the cynic could say that's just to cash in on fanboys and girls. Let's take a look and see if there's there's more to do. This is obviously our, our 36 by 36 game map, so we'll, we'll, we'll look at that in a moment or two, because that's, that's going to need an open out. So we're on to our cardboard tokens. Um, so, yeah... Um, I don't know if I'm if I'm blown away by it. We've got our TARDIS. We've got a transmat, I think. 
time vort out. We've got a couple of crates for cover. We've got some pipes. Are these double-sided? Yes, they are. So we have the ubiquitous desert planet, and we've got the uh, generic futuristic warehouse spaceship bits. And we've got a ramp. Okay, cool. We've, we've got a botanist pet. It's kind of cute, though, and I like the fact they're double-sided. I like that you're getting whoops, popping out already. I like the fact there's multiple uses going on here. Cool. Okay, they're, yeah, they're, they're all right. You know, I'm not going to, like, writing home to my mum, send her a postcard to look what I got, but, you know, they're okay. This is cute. Whoops, I'm moving the box on you, sorry. A little cardboard ruler. So, you know, again, nice touch here, I suppose. Little Billy, or little Susie, has been bought this by Grandma John, who... Grandma John? I don't know, look, the world we're living in today, I wouldn't be surprised. So, Grandma John apparently has bought this for little Billy or little Susie, or both of them. It's a shared present. And uh, it's got everything, the tokens and the rulers are there. I like the fact that the, the tokens, even the target hit symbols, it's kind of got a Gallifreyan thing going on with it there. So, I like that. Again, double-sided, double hits, things like that. Okay, cool, cute. Ooh, goodies. Now, what way will we do this? Because there's lots of goodies here. Will we will we look at the minis, or will we look at the cards, or will we look at dice? Will we save the minis to the end? Do you really care? Is anyone still watching by this point? We've got two fairly hefty wads of cards. I think that that's going to warrant kind of a another shot without the box and all the road. So we'll come back to that. We've got our bag of, again, bespoke dice. Um, yep. Yeah. It's a bit like any of these horror games now, you know, just playing dice, symbols are there, that's it. There's, you know, we're not going to get excited about the dice. Hmm. Two Warlord game bases. Oh, they maybe come off a sprue or something, have they? Well, well let, let's see. We'll get rid of this. So we've got two frames of Daleks. Now, I'm kind of, I'm kind of impressed. Kind of impressed because these are gold. That kind of bronze colour. They they are they are a dialect colour already. Um so you know if we go back to little Billy and little Susie, who don't know how to hold a paintbrush, they're off to a laugh and start because you know they're not disappointing. Um we'll see just how easy build they are in a little second or two. No bums. They don't have any bottoms. Does that matter? Probably not. They're not designed with a flying base in mind, I don't think. Or maybe, maybe, maybe they do. Maybe there is a little lip there. Maybe that's something that's going to come along. Or something that's already out. Who knows? But yeah. Um, th they are alright. I don't think... I don't think you can complain about them. They're Daleks. They do what they say in the tin. And they're gold win and we've got two frames of cybermen or or is it cyber people now no all their bases are there one two three four five six six bases one two three four five six one two three four six six bases cybermats don't know if the cybermats get their own bit how many cybermats is there one two three Four, five, six. So maybe maybe the two bases, maybe you put like three Cybermats in each base. They're like a swarm thing or something. We'll have to, we'll have to find out about that. Um, again, these are, well, they're modern Cybermen. I'm not, I can't remember off the top of my head which version of modern Cybermen they are because there's been quite a few versions of modern Cybermen. There is one of them in the book. The bigger fanboys and girls will twig which ones they are. Yeah, it's those ones there. Okay. 
Um, because if they're not Vermondas, I don't care. Um, so yeah, they're pretty. Arm options, I see. I think we're getting the arm options. There's one, two, three, four, five, six arms. No, they just they get an arm each. That's that's a bit of a letdown because some of them have the the little sort of arm built in gun. Some of them have an open hand, and some of them have like a, a closed hand extended. That's kind of cute. They're they're three kind of classic poses. I do miss my Cybermen with rifles though, so I might have to sort that out. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's get a look at this map then, shall we? So at 36 inches by 36 inches, it's, as you can see, fairly decently sized uh, gaming area. Paper map, um, maybe not ideally perfect in that way, but given that we hit know the dimensions, this isn't going to be a hard thing to replicate with our own scenery or terrain or mark out an area. Use pre-printed maps of uh, the likes of drive through RPG or whatever. So it's, it's no big hardship. It's a designated play space. What you fill that space with is going to be up to you. So that's like the cyber side of it. We've got steps, we've got a wall, we've got low lighting, things like that there going on. Is it a spaceship? Is it a hangar? It's kind of open. It's got its uh, markings on it. It's got, obviously got the BBC, the Warlord, the Doctor Who uh, logos, and then we've got a time track for the rounds down the bottom here. And then if we flip it over, we have our alien landscape, alien landscape, desert, um, Mars, whatever it needs to be, a microphone that doesn't need to be in shot, but there you go, that's that's the consummate professionals, as always, that we are. I kind of like this side better than the uh, the other one, don't know why, just yeah, just kind of like it. It's, maybe it's a bit more Doctor Who. It's a bit more classic Doctor. Just missing a few polystyrene rocks. Guess who's got polystyrene rocks? That's right. This guy. So the book said uh, easy build. Didn't it say easy build? Is that what it said in the back? Easy fit. Well, we see how easy fit. I've got snippers. Um, technically we should probably see if these come out without snippers, but we're not going to do that. Why would you do that? Well, because, remember little uh, Billy or Susie? They might not own snippers. So we've got a little bit of a Dalek. Watching not to nip off anything that shouldn't be nipped. We've got another bit of a Dalek. And nip, 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 and we forgot the nip. Oh, there he's nipped anyway. So there we go. Three bits of Dalek. Wonder is there an order that you're supposed to build this in? Let's let's say no. Let's say there's not. There is an eye hole on the front, so I'm guessing the eye has to go in first. No to kind of click that. But then we've got these two halves. Not, not I'm not being a great advert here for the company, am I? Well that that didn't work. Everything kind of just fell apart. All went the wrong way. There we go. Uh, that's that's fairly solid okay first one always goes wrong and, and it doesn't really sell the whole easy build so let's let's do a second one and and in theory that should just be like a dream that's just like fall together da, 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 da. De, 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 de. one part this is where he tricks them all into watching him as he builds all the Daleks and he gets to call the excuse that he's making a video. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just, I'm just going to build a second one to see if we're now flawless. If that was first time nerves. Going to try 
putting both halves together first and then sliding the top bit on or get both halves kind of mounted. It is a tight fit. Really is it's very tight, very tight. Okay, so two halves. Then slide Mr. Face on. No, because I've got fat thumbs. So Mr. Face on and squeeze the two halves together and it works. It works a dream. Those are easy fit. Shall we try a Cyberman? Okay, certain little Dalek friends up there. We await your command. So, cyber person, these are all boringly in the exact same pose. Uh, little feet studs. Uh, which arm we go for? Go for gun arm. Ugh. And we need a base. Oh, hang on. What? Right, okay, yeah. I've spotted something. What, you spotted Andy? Go on Andy, show us. I'll show you now in a second, right? Right, remember I was talking about the two Warlord bases earlier on, and, and I counted the Cybermats, and there's like one. Well, there's one. Yeah, these are Cybermats as well, I hadn't spotted. There's like one, two, three, four, and they're on their own bases. So there's eight of those, and then there's one, two, three, so there'll be six that aren't, so you must get to put like a little cyber mat on the base each one of these, or something. We'll maybe read something later on that we're missing about that. So this is good old fashioned arm and peg, and, and that's a fairly, that's a fairly sturdy fit. I'm going, if I put pressure on that, it's going to break the join. Um, break it right off. A couple of wobbles takes it off. So yeah, you could assemble and play with these as soon as you get home. What about the base? Oh, there's BBC Warlord Games. Oh. Okay. Oh, they're not all the same pose. Their legs are in different positions. Look. He's striding, so he needs a base with its holes far apart. There you go, because that base's holes are quite close together. These ones are far apart. So this is a striding Cyberman. There we go. Yeah. Well, well since we've clipped this base off, and we've built two of these guys. It'd be a sin not to build a standing Cyberman, wouldn't it? So let's find one whose legs are close together. There's one. We'll call you Jeff. So if you're just standing, we'll give you a I'm just standing kind of arm. Jeff's not going to complain. So they're just standing kind of arm. There you go. I am Jeff, please tell me Joe. They don't talk like that, I know. But I'm just, just saying, okay. Poppity poppity. I'm not gonna say that those joins will last forever without glue, but what I am quite happy to say is that those joins will hold sufficiently to allow you to play the game. Cool. I think I'm going to build the rest of these. So that's them all built. Um, about 15 minutes. Done it all. Uh, one casualty. Uh, there was a bit of a, a tension accident. I didn't snip it off. Um, as I was cutting the frame. Um, it just bing, sprang off. Uh, it's a fairly small join, so I'll, I'll try and super glue that. Cybermen arms, some of them are very snug fit, some of them are a little bit loose. Uh, to be honest, I don't know that I would 
play this for very long without gluing these guys uh, just for stability. Even the Daleks, I think that probably what will happen is they'll get a they'll get a dot of glue up in there uh, just to make sure that they're going to stay together. <sighs> it was a bit boring. That was the only thing because you're kind of doing the same thing with the exact same model over and over again. You know, the Daleks, do, do they need posability? Do you know what? I think they do, in all honesty. I mean, I've got some of the old metal Daleks and uh, you can kind of torso twist them a bit and, and that is a thing that, that the Daleks done. You could do this with a lot of craft knife and a lot of patience if you were insane, I suppose. So don't do that. Probably just ruin them. Um, but by the same token, if you're looking Daleks and Cybermen, be it for this game, be it for something else, it's a very cheap way to get them with a, a retail price around the, the £35 mark. That That's a fair whack of figure. Got, got to be fair to that. So yeah, uh, that's them done. Uh, the only thing that remains, well, there's a couple of things that remain. Next thing is to have a look at the, the cards. I think we probably, by the time we've done that, will have talked enough. Um, so I think what we'd like to do is come back maybe with a little bit of a, a gameplay video, uh, not a part two, we'll just we'll just do it as a standalone, but it is like a part two, so it's it's the unofficial part two. So you know, the, let's look at the cards. I must be tired and need coffee. So the cards then, of which there are quite a few. Um, there's three different uh, piles of cards. There's the miniatures cards for your factions there's battle cards and there's adventure cards we'll take a quick run through um the miniature just the miniature cards so you you have an idea of what there is i suppose the the first thing to try and do is to, to just give you a context of what you're looking at here in terms of the anatomy of the card so you've obviously got picture of whatever the the model is in this case it's uh, the Doctor. Um, we've got a series of stats down this side. A couple of little icons here, a couple of little icons here, a little icon here with a number, and then some wordy things at the bottom. Um, in game terms though, what you've got is a picture of the miniature that the card will refer to, and the number here is the number of them that you get in your faction for playing this card if this card's part of your part of your team so in this case obviously it's one for the doctor the the wordy part down at the bottom that does stuff is any special traits or notes uh, that relate to the miniature uh, for the card and all the special traits are then detailed on the reverse side for quick reference as well um, up here we have the fate uh, token icon and that's how many fate tokens they'll add to your faction's pull. This little symbol tucked away in here is to help you just identify what set it's out of. In this case it's the starter set. Um, if you need to separate your cards out later, if you're maybe getting rid of some or you're just wanting to, to reset it for some reason, I don't know. but So you can track what set and perhaps even what edition it's going to be out of as well. This is a special uh, character icon when applicable. I haven't read any further to know what it's applicable to. In this case it's the, the BBC's Doctor Who symbol. Maybe they'll involve characters from other things like Torchwood and stuff like that there. Sarah Jane Adventures. Don't know. I suppose theoretically it could involve characters that are completely outside of Doctor Who, but who knows? Whatever. Um, where have we got to? Yes, we're doing that. So what we have down here then are the sort of the general profiles or stats, if you're if that's your kind of lingo that you like. You've got movement, resilience, melee, and shooting. So the movement's the maximum number of inches that the miniature. Uh, can be moved during their movement phase. Resilience is a combination of their body armor and natural resistance training, things like that, and it reflects the number of combat dice uh, rolled when a miniature is shot at. 
Melee is the miniature skill in hand to hand fighting and the number of combat dice added or subtracted uh, from the total dice rolled during melee combat and shooting. This is the value of combat dice added to or subtracted from the total number of dice rolled when the miniature fires a gun or other ranged weapon. Okay, so obviously we have this version of the Doctor included in the base game. And we have Mr. Tennant. So Capaldi and Tennant are the two Doctors that are with you there. A um, little bit of difference in their abilities, traits, and a little bit of stat difference there too. So then the companions will sort of break it down this way. So obviously we've got, now these are all going to be modern era ones in this set. So you've got Rose Tyler. You've got Martha Jones. Donna Noble. Wilfred Mott. Clara Oswald. Strax. Jenny Flint. And Madame Vestra. So those are all, I suppose, the the good guy cards, for the want of a better word, maybe. Faction-wise, as uh, you would expect, given the box set that it is, we have Cybermen. This also explained a little thing um, that I was wondering about the miniatures and the cyber cyber mats and whatnot. So we've got our cyber leader, okay? Tough enough cookie there. We have standard Cyberman. Comes in squads of four. And there are several of those. Okay, so that's your individual Cyberman in little in little squads. Then we've got Cyberman and Cybernauts. And you'll notice that there's two up here. No fate symbol, no fate points. This is where these lone little cyber mats that were on the frame come in. So obviously this guy will have two cyber mats on his base is the way I'm reading that. And the reason that works in my head is you've got that card and that card, which pretty much uses up the spare cyber mats. And then there's the cyber mat swarm, which seems to be the individual ones that are on their own little base as well. Okay, so Cybermen, that's all well and good. Daleks then. So we have our Dalek Patrol leader. Okay. Then we have Dalek Patrol and again squads of three. And we have several of those. Ding, ding, ding. Because that is basically what the Daleks in the base set do. It's just a cyber, a Dalek Patrol. So nothing fancy, no heavy weapons. They're all sort of things and expansions that you can pick up. Also included then, we have the Jadun. We've got a leader. We've got enforcers and standard troops. Okay. And that is the same for these chaps here, the Zygons. So we've got a Zygon leader, a Zygon elite, and a standard Zygon. Kind of pleased to see those guys. They're a good classic uh, Who monster. And then slightly more oddly, I'm interested to see how this works in game. We have the Silent, or the Silence. Um, but they're called the Silent here. Silent leader, Silent veterans, and standard silent trooper. That represents all of the miniature cards that come. Now clearly there's no Zygon, no Dijun, and no silence in the box. Maybe there is silence, and we've just forgotten that they were there. <gasps> no, there, there's not really. So, the other cards, I'll be back in a moment. So next up for your consideration then is the battle cards. Uh, there's like 30, 36 of these or something? Yeah, 36 battle cards. Weird, the map is 36 by 36 and you get 36 battle cards. No matter. Um, each player, these are shuffled at the start of the game. Each player gets a hand of five and it's replenished uh, through the game. And these, these are little boosters. They're tactical bonuses. Um, like the dice 
Um, these all have symbols on them. Uh, I haven't really shuffled these, okay? So, you know, they're, they're a mixture of things. I'll throw some of them out here for you. Whoops, just nearly sent everything flying there. Um, but to try and sort of give it a little bit more meaning for you, maybe. So this mad clutter of, of dice then, uh, this is for a re-roll. Uh, you can re-roll any of the dice in a single hand. Uh, useful enough. This sort of explosion hit symbol is... <gasps> cards can be played during combat resolution to add one more hit to any roll before any uh, defense cards have been played. Defense cards? What's he talking about defense cards? Quickly, tries to find a defense card. There's one. Um, there we go. Little t-shirt. Uh, cancels all hit scored and any hit cards played during a combat action. Okay, so it's like armor, blocks, whatever you want to call that. Um, we've done all those ones. This is where you now can't find the blinking cards. You know, we should sort, sort it out, shouldn't we? Uh, oh no, sorry. Yeah, the, I got them mixed up. Look, almost identical cards, except for this little infinity symbol, okay? So the top one can be played during a shooting resolution to add... Uh, one defense or one block to any roll after all hits have been calculated. This one cancels all hits scored and any hit card played during a combat action. Okay, so this one's slightly better, obviously, than that one. Uh, In-house music has to even make sure he doesn't hum something that's inappropriate. Um, lightning strike. Use this card as if uh, a lightning had been rolled. Okay, so the card adds on to that for you. Um, then we've got this explosive hit. Double all the hits scored during a combat action. So if you've done a good roll, you can slap that on. And hey presto, it gets it gets even better. Er, er, er. Um, I think there's one more. Like, it's only 36 cards, you'd wonder. There we go. Okay, the fate symbol. Um, use it as if it was a fate token. Okay. Now, there is a little symbol. Yeah, it's actually on the cards, sorry. You notice that some of the cards have this uh, hand with a card in it, whilst other ones don't. The hand with the card can be played at any time, including during an hour player's turn. Uh, to affect the result of a dice rolled for any action or any event resolution. So the other ones you're playing them in your turn, the ones with the hand, can be played anywhere you like. And I think that covers all of those, essentially. Yeah, it does. So adventure cards next. Bear with me. So the last set of components then are these adventure cards. You get five of them. For your faction at the start of the game and that's it you've you've got those five um, you can select them or you can draw them randomly though there are different categories of card the base game well the base game actually comes with all these but this pile of 15 represents the generic cards which are for anyone to use but when you go through the, the full deck as a supply, you then discover that there's some that are, are unique uh, to different factions. So we've got a set of cards that are Zygon only, a set of cards that are Silent only, the Doctor and Companions only, the Doctor only, Companions only, Special Characters only, and Judoon only. Notice there's there's none here specifically uh, marked for Cybermen or for Daleks. I haven't gone through them all, um, but they they seem to cover a very broad range of of quirky bits. They're they're little story elements. They're MacGuffins. They're they're the things that I think. Aside from your own tweaks to scenarios, these are the things that are going to add more story and stop this being just a straight up fight game. Which, whilst there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, I think I think especially given the the topic of Doctor Who, 
think it's going to become quite tired and boring very quickly. So you are going to want um, to lighten it up. These will help. Some of them are simple quirky things to do with, with stuff that you'll do in game. Other ones, you know, restore health. Other ones, uh, sort of, it's like a get out of jail free card. You know, if you've been exterminated, you can come back into play. I mean, here, it's a thing that goes ping. You know, there's a bit of humour uh, that ties in with the same thing. The doctor has created a gadget to aid him in his mission. Keep this card in play. Every time you play your last battle card, draw another one immediately. Um, you know, if we go over to the, the Zygons one, discard this card and pick an enemy miniature. It is unsure whether their target is friend or foe. That miniature can't shoot or run this turn. Uh, Judun. All Judoons in your faction are also equipped with an executioner pistol. Yay! Everyone gets a, an extra thing. Special characters one. There's only one of these in, in all of this. Discard this card to select one special character to to gauge in a distracting rant towards any enemy miniatures within six inches. The target misses the rest of their turn, but the upkeep phase is resolved normally. <laughs> well, you can probably tell I'm, I'm sniggered at that. I just I find that, that quite funny and very much in keeping of it, you know. Um, there's one here. Just bring it over the centre. This is one of the Doctor Only ones, obviously. Discard this card to allow an additional shoot or move action to all characters from the Doctor's faction at least six inches away from the Doctor's miniature. This action must be taken immediately and does not prevent the miniature from being activated normally in that turn. I'm the Doctor and I will be your victim this evening. <laughs> you had a choice, remember that. Reroll a combat dice. Partial regeneration. When you use this card remains in play and gives the Doctor the tough special trait. A miniature with tough or a vehicle with this trait cannot be shocked by shooting attacks. So, you know, there's we could sit and go through these and, and I'll, I'll snigger it a couple more. Some of them, yeah, are, are just mundane, factual, statistic things. Bang, off we go. Of course, the, the nice thing about all this, again, is more pictures from the shows. Uh, which is going to help the, the fanboys and recognising what scenes they're from, what episodes they're from too. Hopefully, I mean again this is all very modern Doctor stuff, hopefully as the expansions um, are obtained and we get going through the cards from that, we'll see some more of the, the classic Who stuff start to appear in these as well. It'll be a bit disappointing to think it's all going to stick with the, the modern sort of comeback era. One last time with feeling. These three cards I had inadvertently lifted out as I was sorting out the adventure deck because I was going through it, I was going through it picture side up. Um and like, oh, I've I've missed faction cards. Uh, I'll take them out. Of course, only then when I stopped to actually talk about them to discover they're all adventure cards. And they are reinforcement cards for three of the factions, as you can see there, Judin, Zygon and the Silent. Which um, go on the adventure deck for the three relevant factions, which you mentioned there just in the, the previous scene. So that's another cool little thing, a little bit of extra unexpected help uh, onto the battlefield for that faction, presumably again if you've got the miniatures for it. So that's us. That's our first look at the Doctor Who uh, Exterminate game from Warlord. Parting uh, shot here, everything back into the box now that it's sorted through and read. And this should be something to take note of. It is the worst box in the world because, as you can now see, having opened your decks of cards, having built your miniatures, there is no facility at any way to keep them organised within the cardboard box. So do bear in mind if you're picking this up that you will need, um, at the very least, elastic bands for your decks of cards. And might one suggest a small sorting box of some description if you don't plan to expand beyond the miniatures in the base game. At least something to keep them safe and secure and snug for you would probably not go amiss. There is room in the box with the mat in there and the tiles and whatnot 
for one of those sort of small compartmentalized boxes what you might pick up in a hardware or discount store and that would probably do your job reasonably well but certainly if you're going to throw everything back into the box like this chuck it in the back seat of the car or into your kit bag for going to the mate's house of the con don't expect the Daleks certainly not the Daleks to survive unbroken on that journey and don't expect all your cards to be in a nice order for you so there you go valuable learning lesson but other than that happy yeah uh, like the look of it like how it sounds having had the, the read through the rules uh, looking forward to getting a, a bit of a crack at that and that's what we'll try and follow up with next is a wee uh, a wee gameplay video for you all right thanks for watching